and we're recording and I'm going to make you host before I have off. Thank you. All right, everybody, welcome to the May 23rd meeting of the GOL committee. Um, I am, there he is, awesome, great timing. Uh, I am going to call this meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. and I'm going to check in with each of the committee members to make sure that they can hear and be heard. Pat DeAngelis? Present. George Ryan? Councilor Ryan? I'm here. Lynn Griesmer? Present. Councilor Ette? Present. Great, thank you. Um, all right, so we are, as per our last meeting, we're switching up the a, a little bit of the, um, oops, hang on, sorry, I got to. I gotta keep my notes, otherwise I don't know what's happening. Um, we're gonna move forward in the agenda as um, planned. We currently do not have any attendees. So this is the time for public comment. Um, this is when attendees would raise their hand if they were here, but as we have no attendees at 6.30, we're going to move forward in the agenda. Um, we're going to start today with the review of the nuisance property bylaw for clarity, consistency, and actionability. And then we had some other things on the agenda as well that, uh, depending on time, we are going to move to. Um, are there any questions on the agenda and the order? I put the resolution last, as we talked about, to try to um, focus our, our time. Um, I want to note something on the agenda. I don't, I think this was a carryover. The committee meeting time has been changed to 6.30 p.m. Uh, I don't know why that was on the agenda today, but just know that it's not, nothing's changing with that. Um, I had noticed that earlier today. All right, so nuisance property bylaw 3.26. We are going to be reviewing this for clarity, consistency, and actionability. I'm going to share my screen. Um, what I have compiled are comments from Lynn and myself. Those were um, the only comments I received, which is all good. But as we go through, um, I think my plan is to go through, and I look to the prior GOL chairs, as this is the first time we've actually done a bylaw um, together. So I will look to the past GOL chairs to course correct me if I feel like, if they feel like I'm going off in a direction they don't like. And then I will decide if I'm going to take their advice or not. Um, and we're going to, but my plan is to go through it line by line and, um, I will not be reading it out, out loud, but I'm going to say section A, section B1, section B2. If you have something in that, um, I'm going to assume you think it clear, consistent and actionable unless told otherwise. Okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Lynn. Yeah. The other piece is that we're going to also decide what we think needs to be referred to CRC. Yeah, ultimately we will send the entire bylaw back to them. We're not gonna just send them pieces of it, um, but we're making note specifically of, of basically if the town attorney said something about it and we don't think that we are the people to answer that, um, that CRC needs to answer it, we should note that they should pay attention to those specific questions. Great. Is it possible to make it bigger? I can also Damn. look at it on SharePoint if it's, yeah, thank you. Is that oh, better? Yes, thank you. Too much? Well, except I can't see comments. Yeah, a little but... smaller. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I see it all. Oh, little... Goodness gracious. All right. I, all right. There we go. Okay. Everybody good? Yep. All right. Okay. So uh, any issues with the title, enforcement, or non-criminal dis disposition? You, you just want us to raise our hands, right? I would like you to raise your hands, correct? Yep. Um, and if I don't see you right away, you can unmute and tell me that you raised your hand. All right, purpose. Okay, going into definitions, B1. We had a comment here from the town attorney that said you may wish to define the number of people which constitutes party or crowd. Uh, I, I had said for CRC, Lynn. Um, yeah, I. if I didn't say CRC here, I totally agree with you. You are listed as author as well. It came in. Oh, I see. Thank you yep. for clarifying that. Yeah, no problem. Sorry. You both, both you and the town attorney. So you get to decide uh, if you want to take credit for the town attorney comments. Councilor nope. Ryan on B1. So I guess the sense is that we as a group don't have any particular view one way or the other on this. And we're looking for CRC to tell us what uh, they think. I mean, um, 
it seems somewhat arbitrary, whatever the number one comes up with, the attorney's comment is he'd like something or she'd like something specific to avoid issues of vagueness. Um, I guess, I don't know. Nobody has any particular thoughts one way or the other. So, I mean, CRC is in the same boat. What, what number do they have in mind? Right. I personally... 10, 15, okay. 20, 25, 30. Um, are, we're dealing with uh, a group of five people, 10 people, 15 people. What in... I just, in general, I think it's a question either entity could ask, what constitutes a gathering in terms of what the purpose of this bylaw is? Um, two people? Probably not. Any thoughts? Or you just want to let CRC come back with a number? Or what if they just say, we don't have a number, we're just going to leave it the way it is? Yeah, I think, I can't figure out, sorry, I can figure out, it takes me 17 more steps to raise my hand, so um, I'll go after Councillor Ate. Councillor Ate? I think my question was, what is the relationship between party, crowd, or events? Before we even speak about a number. What do you mean? I mean, is there a way to distinguish a party from a crowd? And what is the distinction between an event and a party. A party would be an event. So the even before numbers jumped out at me, I was wondering about what the numbers are actually qualifying. Um, so my comment, it I think my thought on what you shared, Councillor Arte, is that this they they said party, crowd, or event, so that to to be really broad, um, because I do think that there are Venn diagrams that could overlap very broadly, but um, you know, people could say, oh, it wasn't a, if it just said an event, um, people would say, oh, there wasn't an event happening. We were just all there. And so I think they, they added in, I think that's my, my thought is that the relationship is that they might overlap, but aren't necessarily the same thing to be intentionally broad. And that the number to, to what George was saying, the town attorney seems like wants us to add a number in. I personally, I did say this should go back to CRC, mostly because I don't want to assume CRC doesn't have a number in mind, but this is something that I would be comfortable accepting even though it is vague. Um, in, in my mind, I think that it's clear enough that it's a group meaning more than two, um, but if we really wanted to add that we could, I, don't, I think it's unnecessary to be honest. I think it's fine. I, I think this is fine as is. Um. I, I do agree, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. But yeah, um, I do agree that this is one of those that should go back to CRC, which okay. would be preempting if we decided to move on it. Okay, great. Let's keep it there. Um. Okay, B2, infraction. Oops, I just moved everything. Sorry. B2. Lynn? I actually suggest we accept this. Uh. Yep, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Yep. I, uh, Council Ryan. So, what we're accepting essentially is it would read a violation of one or more sections of this. No, it would simply read a violation of a law or agreement. No, it would say a violation of one or more sections of this bylaw. So you want to keep it, even though the comment of the lawyer is that that's not how typically one defines an infraction. The comment of the lawyer, I believe they added changed, they suggested that new text. The comment of the lawyer is the strike through. It used to read enforcement of this bylaw by criminal enforcement or non-criminal disposition. Yeah, that was stricken. Yep. But the comment, if I understand, and maybe I just don't understand it, seems to be that this is not typically the way you define an infraction. No, this is the way is typically defined as a violation. That's what the town attorney wrote this in a suggested language change. But Because it, it used to read that infraction was defined as enforcement of the bylaw. Right. And now it reads infraction is a violation of one or more sections as per the uh, attorney's comment. And that removes the, the objection about resolving. Because yes. in the it, yeah, because you can get in trouble, according to this uh, bylaw, if you fail to resolve or do not adequately resolve the issue. So that too becomes an infraction. 
correct? Yeah. If you, um, so, okay, all right. Does that make sense? No, but I'm trusting that CRC, the attorney, and the rest of you understand this. So good. Okay. That's all, all right. right. I'm going to, I'm going to click resolve on the comment. Do okay. you want me to keep, no, can we keep, okay, here's the question of how we send this back to CRC. Should we just keep what's left after we discuss it? That was my plan. I'm not seeing any objection. Okay, so I'm gonna click resolve here and I'm gonna accept these changes. Okay, hey, one down. All right, B3, owner. Um, yeah. Any issues there? Okay. Oh, I suggested okay. we accept it. Yep, same. I'm assuming that unless, unless okay. uh, B4, person. <clears throat> this comment was, did you also wish to include executor in this definition as above? I added in executor because it seemed smart to me in terms of consistency. Agree. Okay. Great, accept. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to accept. All right. Uh, B5, person in charge. My only question on this one is that throughout the bylaw following this point, it makes reference to both owner and person in charge uh, as two separate people. And I think that if this is if this definition is inclusive of both owner and or person who is authorized, that we can just have person in charge. I think that's I'm being a bit nitpicky when I say that, but um there are a couple places down below in the bylaw where it says like notice shall be delivered to owner and person in charge or something like that. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to write, literally write that down so that when we get there, we can edit it. So are you saying to accept this? Um, I wasn't even getting to that point. I, I do think we should accept this as it, at, with the additions from the town attorney. I do too. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just making a mental note as we go through. All right, uh, accept that, accept that. All right, property. Can you show the expanded comments? Uh, yes, but it's that's for public nuisance. There were no comments from on property. Oh. Okay, uh, public nuisance. So my first thing, my first question, Oh, I was saying that some of this was vague. Um, and then I had the, this is the attorney's question here. I also thought significant or substantial disturbance was vague, but I don't think we can quantify that. I suggest we send this to CRC. Okay, any objections, anyone? Okay. Uh, and I'm actually going to delete my comment because I think my comment is for when it comes back to council. I don't think that it's GOL appropriate. I was just saying, I think that their intention was to, that it include private property. Um, response costs, B8. Is the town manager the normal person to establish schedule of costs like this? Is that not something set by the it, it, I'm okay. sorry, I'll raise my hand. No, 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 you're fine. Go ahead. Um the town's the town manager is who we go through. So he'll okay. he'll give it to staff and they'll be it. He'll come back with us to us. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh on eight eight uh, where B9 underage person. Okay. All right. On to section C, public nuisance violations. C one. No comments on that. And remember, just because it doesn't have a town attorney comment doesn't mean we can't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, C2. Uh, all right. Public nuisance includes but is not limited to. Uh, I was confused about the additions here. I felt they were redundant and made this confusing. So I want us to look at this closely. And, and if, if I'm confused, 
and the only one that's totally fine. Councilor Ate? I was wondering if you could expand on your confusion. It seems. Yeah. Before. Yeah. My confusion is coming in because it says uh, activities that could be deemed a violation of, and then it lists federal, state, local, or regulation, and including but not limited to the following laws, bylaws, by, uh, or regulations, whether or not enforcement action is taken. I, I feel like it's just repeating itself a lot, and maybe it just needs to do that to be clear, and it's fine. Um, because I think what it's trying to get at is saying if it breaks any law, federal, state, local, and then I'm going to list a couple that it might break to draw attention to them just in case. Does that is that the goal of this paragraph? So if I get you clearly, then it would be activities that could be deemed a violation of federal, state, or local law or regulation. Um, whether or not an enforcement action is taken under the specific law. So the parenthesis goes, or do you want to stop from regulation? So this part is what the, I think the town attorney added. Yeah. And I think that it just felt like it was saying law so many times that I got lost in the sentence. But I think that that's me reading this quickly. Um, I, reading it out loud, I think it's I think it's okay. I can let it go. Councillor Ryan, I think he's simply trying to cover every possible. Yeah. Base. And so it's federal, state, or local, and then what follows are state and local laws. Yeah. Okay. No. Pat. Well, I think that we could take out the second. I think it's redundant and. Um, the important piece is whether or not an enforcement action is taken under these specific laws, bylaws, or regulations. The other piece seems kind of could be removed. You're saying the following laws, bylaws, zoning laws, including but not limited to, feels like it could come out, I guess. I think if I'm the only one that got tripped up by this, I should just, I'm just going to let it All right. go. But do you think, I mean... I don't care. Okay. All right. I'm going to let it go. Um, all right. Accepting. Sorry. I'm going to take a minute. Mm -hmm. The capitalizations, can we agree? I will do the capitalizations when you're not having to watch me do it. Uh, George? Just the thought that in general, um, assuming the attorney is doing what the attorney is supposed to do, I don't think it's wise to take out large portions of text if the attorney hasn't had any comments on it. So it's just kind of a follow-up to Pat's thought. Uh, understand the desire to make things clear, but um, that's a lot of text, and um, the attorney is passed on it. CRC is passed on it. Yep, that's um, fine. So I think that's, that's fair. All I wanted to say. Okay, um, I had a question in this one. So we're two a one. Master no law, chapter two seventy two, section fifty three is titled penalty for certain offenses, and I have it pulled up and can reference it if people want me to. Um, it's it's not disorderly conduct. The words disorderly conduct aren't, I don't even think in that huh. law. Um, hang on, I have it up. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. I will find it. And so I just, I wanted to make sure that this is what, it's referencing the right thing. It makes, I think it makes sense. Um, okay. It's titled penalty for certain offenses. I'm not gonna make you deal with how many tabs I currently have open. So let me, okay. 
So this is Mass General Law, Chapter 272, Section 53, penalty for certain offenses. And it talks about night walkers, common street walkers. Um, there are things that relate. And I just wanted to, I just yeah. wanted to make sure this was the right thing. I think that's a CRC question, but with I think your comment is important, but it should go back to CRC. Okay. Councilor Ryan? No. Okay. All right. I will keep my comment in there and leave it for CRC to just confirm. Um, or I think if they don't confirm it, I think they should. I'm sharing again, sorry. Uh, if they say yes, that is correct, I still think that they should change the titling of it to match what the bylaw or what the MGL actually says. Okay. Anything else under one? Then we've got a couple commas in here from the attorneys. Okay. Zoning bylaws. I didn't confirm these zoning bylaw numbers, um, which we sh we should do, but I assume are correct. Okay, general bylaws. Okay, uh, specific events. We're back to lawyer comments. So specific events, uh, the KP law said is a gathering of violation if underage persons are able to access alcohol regardless of whether there is a public urination fight or litter. Sorry, my I thought this was the funniest comment of the document. Councilor Ryan. Ditto. I don't yeah. understand. It's, it's, it says that may yeah. include. If it said, and that include, then I'd agree. But it says that may include. So clearly it implies that also they may not. So I don't see that. I think, I yeah. think in that case, I, I agree with you. And I actually think in that case, we could just accept, we could say that they, I don't agree with the attorney's comment. And I think that I agree with you, the word may leaves enough flexibility um i think we could accept this does anyone feel strongly that this needs to go to crc i think it's fine okay we'll accept it take a word the thing all right I wish there were a way to accept all the changes that are like small punctuation changes. I think you can. You, think yeah, we can do that. You Not all the, changes, just punctuation changes? I think if you swipe the whole thing. Oh, oh okay, well, let me try it. Let me try and you it. just say accept and move on to next. Go up to accept. No, go up, up, up there, oh. accept. Okay, magical. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, all right, C, activities that may not violate. Uh, oh, I just had a question here, but I think this is for when it comes to counsel. I don't think that this is a, maybe it's a clarity question. I wasn't clear on who gets to enjoy the property. <laughs> Nobody. Because I mean, it, so I, I, I think I actually did feel like it wasn't clear, but I'm really willing for this committee to say that's not clarity, consistency, actionability. But basically my thought was that the way I read this, does the public have a right to enjoy someone else's private property and therefore make a judgment in a certain moment that they are not in fact enjoying it? Um, I get what they're trying to get at, but I struggled with this one a little bit in terms of the concept of enjoyment of a property. Hmm. You know, there's, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, I'll take that as a raised hand. I, there's so many things I could list under C. It's almost like they need to have, et cetera. I mean, you know, what if somebody decides to streak? Well, or I think that's, that's why they say including but not limited to. Okay. Yeah. All I right. guess, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pat and then George. Uh, where is it? I guess I'm never mind. Never mind. Okay. Council Ryan. I think this bears the uh, 
the clear imprint of where this orig originated from and what, at least for some people, it is aimed at, namely student gatherings. Right. Namely, so these are things that involve sometimes, unfortunately, public urination, fighting, blocking the public way, excessive litter. Um, these are essentially student gatherings. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, activities that may not violate a specific law, bylaw, or regulation, but otherwise disturb the public peace or, or create a public nuisance. I don't think we can use the word nuisance because that's what we're... Right. Uh, you know, so your question is, I think it's legitimate. What does disturb the enjoyment of a property mean in this context? My reading of it or understanding of it is any kind of thing that disturbs the neighbors. Probably most of the people at the party are perfectly happy with all these activities, are just indifferent to, if not, um, doesn't bother them, but it certainly bothers the neighbors or people who live in that, right? So um, it's disturbance of the neighborhood or disturbance of, you know, I agree with you. I don't know. How is the enjoyment of the property disturbed? Um, I don't know. So I would take it back to CRC and ask them to clarify it. Okay. Anyone else? I, that's my thought. Yeah. Pat? Yeah, I'm sitting here wondering, and this actually happened uh, where uh, uh, there were, I forget what the demonstrations were. If there were people who wanted to know how certain counselors were going to vote. This was like maybe the first year. And they drove up to counselors' houses with uh, cars that had uh, speaker bullhorns in them and paraded on the street. They did that outside of my house. Yeah. Um, that's freedom of speech. Uh, it was a nuisance. It bothered all my neighbors. Um, it, you know, and there were abutters on Amity Street who complained. And uh, so I have trouble a little bit with this um, because there is no specific bylaw against demonstrations. Um, there is no, I don't know. It just feels we do have a noise by law, however. Yeah, but are you going to tell people to stop? I'm just saying we have it. I'm not saying, you know, I, I don't know how you, <laughs> yeah. there's no measurement in the noise bylaw. Yeah, the activist what, in me right. is wondering. I mean, would a, would a bunch of us sitting down in the street to protest something that was happening um, be um, subject to this bylaw? And would we be, then be fine for sitting down and blocking traffic for whatever reason I, I just have a I don't know I, I don't know why it didn't occur to me before but it's kind of bugging me right now okay so what I'm gonna say in my comment is need CRC Claire Claire well, again, <laughs> go back to your definition the very first definition hmm. these gatherings however you want to splice them and dice them are specifically for a social occasion or activity. not for political well it doesn't matter it just says social yeah. So it's I, that was where I would start. Um, so if somebody's protesting or demonstrating, it's clearly not a social occasion. Um, now, if they put out lawn chairs and bring in a band and start serving beer, then you might question that. But um, Sounds good, though, to this old act. I, I can understand the desire, but I think so. It says social occasion. I wouldn't <laughs> worry too much about it. OK, I hear you. I do think that including the attorney's recommendation of including but not limited to is important here. Yeah. I don't know why that wasn't in there initially. Um, I had a question about public fights. Oh, wait, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we did that. Um, I just, again, I was being picky, but maybe that's, maybe this is true. It's only a violation if it's viewable to those not at the gathering. Um, my question is if there's two different groups of people living in the same house and one of them is hosting a fight club. I'm being dramatic, but if one of them is hosting a fight club and the other tenant wants to call it in as a nuisance, can they do that if it's technically inside? I might be being too picky and you can say, Anna, you're being too picky and I accept that. Councilor Arte? I don't think you're being picky. I don't really know what a public fight is. Okay, I'm gonna just say it is not clear what this means. 
I mean, I understand what it is. I don't understand what it isn't. I'm sorry. Again, I was I'm looking at two things at once. No, you're fine. What is it? What is it specifically that you don't find clear is public, public fights versus like private fights? Well, it means people. Yeah. Um, you could just say fighting, I guess, but you know, I don't know. Um, it's like public urination. <laughs> that that we but know that is the, defined by the right. state. Like that's that has a state law. Well, I looked it up no, because no, I no. also had the same question. Well, that has a state definition. Up above, it just says fights. I know, and that's why I'm wondering why this can't just say fights. I I don't right. see why not either. Right. All so, right. Can we just change it? So public uh, urination, fighting, we could or fights, fights. Great. Yeah, let's try that and see if it gets past everybody. People are going to say, you're telling me I can't fight in the privacy of my own home? Exactly, uh, yeah. right. Um, blocking of public way. Okay, that's just capitalization. And then they clarify the, um, the attorney clarified. I'm just making sure we've, co I've just covered it. Oh, where was this? Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um, think that they're talking about front lawn yeah I yeah okay meaning front lawn is not a defined term I agree sometimes yeah. it's the backyard that faces someone else uh Lynn yeah I I think it's the the front lawn was just too narrow uh yeah what, what if it just said, said simply from the public way is that I think that's what this was intended to set what get at but it does say street or sidewalk so we could change it to say the public way. Councilor Arte? I had some residents point out again that they were refuse and other things that were left on the side of the houses and not on the front lawn. Yeah. It may not be visible to the public. Right, right. Um, okay, so should we say should we keep this with the attorney's suggestion of excess, excessive litter or refuse on the property visible from the street or sidewalk? Or did you want to change it to say excessive litter or refuse on the property visible from the public way? I think it should be visible from the public way. I actually, I agree. That's fine. Do I capitalize public way? Um. No. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's not a it's not a definition. Right. Okay. No. I mean, it's yeah. Okay. Unless there's another reason it should be capitalized. I don't think so. All righty. Um. D. Nuisance property designation. Da -da -da -da. We did that one already. Um. Oh. There weren't comments on this, but there were additions. Councillor Ate? It's is there a definition of the public way? I think yes. in, in the rest of our bylaws, yes, but not in this specific bylaw. That was my question too. It is it is capitalized in other sections. So maybe I'm Amazing. okay. Yeah. And just... I'm also wondering perhaps if um it would help if there was either a definition or a referral to where it's defined in other places here, maybe that's something mm -hmm. for Sparacy to consider. We can easily pull the definition from another bylaw. Um, can someone look that up for me? Well, I'm, I'm just gonna add a note here for us to do that at the end. You're asking us to um, find the text that defines a public way. In a bylaw. Or anywhere. Anywhere. Or if we could say on the property visible from the public way as defined in whatever, like I don't, even if we don't add it to definitions. Um, okay, D. So 
attorney added some language in. Basically just saying at what point it becomes a nuisance property. I think their their language clarifies a lot. Right. There's there's a maybe a question that's not appropriate for us at this level, but might call an issue of clarity. I mean, let's say in a given incident, there are multiple infractions. Oh. So let's, you know, I mean, clearly you could have fighting. I mean, you could have a whole host of infractions. Litter, blocking, right? Does that count as a single infraction or is that three? Is that immediately? So is it somewhere stated clearly that it has to be three infractions? No. An infraction is one or more. So one single infraction is an instance, regardless of how many more, how many sections yeah. the bylaw were violated. Right. That's so my if, reading of that definition. So if you had multiple, infra multiple uh, issues, it mm -hmm. still only counts as one infraction for that particular event. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's fine by me. That would seem to be what they intend. Um, they're trying to give people a chance to to clean up their act. Yeah. And, uh, not just, right. So, right. okay, if people feel that's clear, then that's fine. I think it's clear once you refer back to the definition, yeah. The definition, again, keep yeah. the definition in mind. All right. Good, good catch there. Thank you. Um, okay, person's liable. This yeah. should go back to CRC because it really does, We they need to talk to enforcement. Yep, I, I, um, I agreed. I agree. With both of that, and so did Len. Any, any, one who feels strongly that we should tackle this. No, okay. Um, separate from that though, there were also some, separate from their two comments on, on A and C. Um, I think this was the attorney that suggested, right, Lynn, you you weren't like editing places. No, this okay. is the attorney, the attorney. suggesting so, that he struck. Yeah, so I just wanted to check this with y'all and, and see if this is, if we're agreeing with that. Um, I, I think that you should leave E all the way from A to, to, before you get to D to CRC. And then on right. D, it looks to me like it's pretty straightforward. I agree. Unless um, I did say based on how they do the, the ones above. I think that's still D though. Or the, I think that's still the last. It is. So yeah. I guess mm -hmm. maybe I'd leave that whole section to CRC. I think this part that I have highlighted is, I think that okay. clarifies it. That's fine. That's fine. But I do think that all the above ones are. This is where we get to the my my concern about persons in charge includes the owner. So owners are person in charge. Persons in charge, the definition includes owner and manager of the property and or manager of the property. So it, it includes both. So I feel like to be in keeping with the definition, it should say persons in charge. I can so, leave that to CRC, but that's if am I'm looking through this for, for consistency, it's inconsistent with the definition to repeat part of the definition in this. I'll just add it as a comment. CRC mm -hmm. can decide yeah, to keep it yeah, or not. Yeah. 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 And it seems that it, it really is needed because the under person in charge, the owner is included. Right. So it should simply say person in charge. Yeah. Okay. Person or persons. All right. I'm going to. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. We're on to F. Cruising, y'all. Monetary penalties. I think this is a good add. Yeah, except. Abatement. Um, we're going to start. I want us to start with the additions that they put before we get to the comments, because the first sentence just is additions, and then the second sentence is a big stri stricken that I think should go. Um,
I think this is, these are good. Yeah. All right. This part I think should go to CRC. <laughs> Um, because I agree and I don't want to delete it without them having a chance to review this comment. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, and then I think I thought we could delete this, the second part that they, a public nuisance may be abated by all reasonable means. The mm -hmm. lawyer said this is a duplicate. Yep. Yes, I agree. All right, um, three, F3, response costs. I was looking at this and I just said, yes, CRC needs to deal with that part. I did too. It mm -hmm. seems beyond yeah. us. Yeah. Beyond okay. yeah. Okay. Um, wait, hang on. Yeah. George, we're back to the issue. Which is? In section four, it says, if more than one provision of this bylaw is violated, each provision violated shall const constitute a separate offense. So that um, seems, that contradicts the other. It seems. Yeah. To... Doesn't it? Oh, I'm freezing. Hang on. It, what if it, it's the shell that is, is, is it just a, Changing, uh, huh. I'm gonna scroll fast. Don't get motion sick. No, sorry. Infraction is a violation of one or more sections of this bylaw. And, oh, sorry, my computer suddenly is lagging. I apologize. Where, where are we? Where are we? Oh, here we are. So this is under the context of enforcement and penalties. Mm -hmm. So why is it here at all? Is it it? Um, what's what's it trying to? Um, is it determining? It does nothing to do with response costs. Um, it's what's what's it trying to say? It's trying to say. Oh wait a second. Yes. Yes. I think what it's what's saying if if you if they get um they get charged with a violation on Monday and they're supposed to clean it up and Tuesday comes and Wednesday and Thursday and it's still not cleaned up each of those can be a sep shall be a separate violation. I agree that that's what the first part says. Yeah. But the second part is what's throwing me. Okay. Um uh... And, and is so it basically thing? they're saying after day one, okay, wait, so am I reading this right? If it's so, after day one, each provision becomes a separate offense. Each day or portion thereof a violation that exists shall constitute a separate of. And shouldn't this say a fraction, infraction, not offense? Yes. Well, that's the problem. Not a, it's always offense. Um, and not infraction. And offense is not a defined term. Right. So is this some sub grouping that has nothing to do with infractions, but has something to do with enforcement and penalties that, mm -hmm. um, or is it, do they mean that if you, uh, the lawyer earlier on seemed to suggest that these two constitute infractions, though it doesn't say that because it's a violation of the bylaw in the sense that you fail to um, meet this provision. You fail to uh, uh, remediate or, or do what you're supposed to do. So you're not only, it's not only an infraction for the initial thing you did, but now you're accumulating infractions right, for exactly. your failure to remediate. Um, right. and is that, but that's not what this says. This calls it an offense. Um, and so I, the issue seems to be with CRC and we'll, I think and what they what they intend. Okay, so what I'm going to write is is an offense different than an infraction. This is not a defined term. Um, if it is an infraction, the second 
sentence contradicts the definition. The definition of mm -hmm. infraction. Mm -hmm. Um, and because CRC is going to get this, we don't need to rewrite it. But no, we it, we just, they need to clarify yeah. or explain to us what we're missing. Maybe we're just misunderstanding right. something, but we don't see it. Um, okay. All right. So we will leave that here. Um, I can suggest leave it as a suggestion that we take this out because it is contradictory so that, and I have it in my comment here. I'm afraid if we take it out, it might get lost in the shot. I don't, yeah, I don't think you should take it out. Okay, it'll look at like a track change. Councilor Ette has raised his hand. Yes, I see, thank you. Councilor Ette. Sorry. Yes, I'm just in agreement with uh, Councilor Ryan. Okay. Um. All right. F5. This is just a rewording. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't. All right. Um, I agree. I agree that they should put an intro paragraph, but I think they need to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, okay. First and second infractions, G1. Hmm. I think this, this is just wording. This is just order of words, I think. So I'm going to accept that. I think it's fine. It's just an addition. I'm going to add my comment in that I made before. Um, about the this being redundant because I want I don't like I I guess we could just make the change but I feel like they put it in there really intentionally so I want to know they either need to separate out owner as a separate definition or it should only read persons in charge in this case the first the property owner could be different from the person in charge Right. Could be, that could this, be true in all cases, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now in this case, you have to deliver to all three. But the but the persons in charge, as defined, could be the is it's defined as property owner and or manager of property. Couldn't it just say uh, property owner or for or a other person in charge or an other or. No, because they're saying that if there is a property owner and a property manager, that both need to get the letter. I think that they oh, should have. Okay, property. wait a second. I think what they're saying, I'm sorry, Anna. No, I, I'm saying, I think what they're trying to say, I, I think that they we need to separate out property owner not to be one of the de the things defined under persons in charge. I think that it's leading to too much confusion. Well, no, I think that what they're saying is, there is a person in charge, which can actually be a tenant. And but this notice would be going to the owner. Who I own it, so it comes to me. Uh, Lynn is the uh, person in charge and she gets a copy. And and I think that's uh, reasonable. I don't think because the owner doesn't necessarily know what's going on. And so there's trying I believe if I go back into my CRC memory, they were trying to say that both the owner, the property owner and people in charge should be aware of what's going on. I completely agree with you that both that should happen and that that's what they were trying to, what they were trying to say. Mm -hmm. My issue is that their definition of person in charge. I gotcha. Okay. All right. I finally got it on. Sorry. I wasn't explaining it clearly. Counselor Ate. I was wondering about the definition of occupant. It is not defined. Owner is defined. So yes, it, is. it yeah. shouldn't be in persons in charge. Sorry, Lynn. Yeah, they got to clean this up. <laughs> I, or we have to clean it up. So well, I don't think so. I get well. I no. got to go to the definition. I can't. Let me. It's up on the screen right now. Oh, okay. So that's fine. Go ahead. 
Owner is here, persons in charge. Legal person. owner, person, any person having charge, care, or management of property. The It could be still the a property owner, and then only one notice goes out, and or a person who is authorized to act on their behalf with regard to the property. So I, I think that it would just clarify... Yeah, I guess the thought is that there, as you said, a number of you have said now, you could have a property which in which the owner is also the person in charge of the property. Right. And then you can have a property in which the owner has absolutely nothing to do with the property. Um, he has a person in charge of the property. And in this case, you clearly want the owner and also the person in charge um, to be notified and right. to be aware of what's going on. Um, that's why they mentioned both. Though you're right, in some cases it may turn out to be the same individual. It probably doesn't hurt, uh, at least in this context, to have them just have them mentioned, um, because in some cases they separate will be because the one, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, whereas in the earlier case, it seemed, uh, yeah, it did seem sort of not needed. But here, person it's a, yeah. we could. I mean, if we really wanted to be persnickety, we could say, "And persons in charge, if different than owner." But I, I'm willing to let it go. I just, I, I find it confusing, but I think yeah, I yeah. find it confusing because I've been staring at this for a while. Mm. And I think that keeping it in there does make the point of this stronger, which is that everybody should be getting a notice. And I, I think that that's fair. And also, why shouldn't it just simply be the owner? Um, because property owner is not defined, but owner is. Okay, yeah, that's a good It's defined point. as the legal owner of record to a particular parcel of land, blah, 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 blah. So it would seem to be notice of infraction shall be delivered to all occupants, maybe lowercase p, yeah. I don't know, or just owner, or the owner of the property, or owners. I think lowercase p. Property and then owners. Um, um, fine term, I don't know. I want to go back to... Councillor Ette's point, occupants is capitalized here as if it has a de definition somewhere, um, but it, it is doesn't. not defined. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so lowercase it. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ette? I'm referring to comment A16 that speaks about notice of violations. Um, go, go into occupants as well. And that's why I don't know if lowercase works as much as having a definition of uh, who an occupant is. My comments are not numbered. Can you clarify which comment you're talking about? Oh, this is section E1 above oh. also makes occupants liable. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um... Yes. I mean, doesn't this also have the strange consequence that you could be at a party behaving perfectly appropriately and yet somehow be held legally liable for the, say, if somebody's fighting or somebody's urinating in the front yard um, or somebody's selling or giving alcohol to an underage person? Um, the fact that you live there, I guess the argument is, well, that makes you liable. But, um, well, if you live there, you can say, hey, don't pee on my lawn. Uh, oh, exactly. You're responsible already for what happens in your place. Or you can say, I'm sorry, you can't serve that alcohol here. This is yeah. an underage person. You may not know the person is underage. You're supposed to know. You're supposed to be aware of what's going on in your own. Well, I think that this is, I mean, when you when you really dig into it, this is really broad because it's saying that. I know. A, C is saying persons engaging in the activity resulting in a public nuisance, which makes sense to me. But then A, like George just said, you could just right. be existing in the same place and right. get in a fight around you. And I don't think that that's right. I don't think that that's fair. If you were not participating in it and you were not organizing or sponsoring the event. Yeah, think of the fraternity. We have a, a fraternity, um, not actually it's in District 4 now, but it, it's notorious for getting in, in these sorts of situations. And there are probably 40, 30 or 40 people who live there at least. Um, so they're all going to get a separate notice. I mean, yeah, it doesn't make any. Well, I, I, maybe that's the way it has to be, but uh, it seems like an awful waste of paper 
And, uh, you know, let's I mean, you could very well be somewhere else. You could not even be uh, at the residence when the event takes place. Right. But now you're legally liable because there is. Uh, I mean, we have a part of the that has hundreds of people. There are there this bylaw and the rental registration bylaw have a they're like sledgehammers. And I I think that there is. Yeah. So so I want folks to yeah because i think this is this is a big this is massive and it's anti student and it is anti student well, we're getting now into the larger issue but in terms of clarity consistency and actionability um i don't think it's actionable well i don't think you can legally say all 200 people that live in this apartment building cuz it says all lands including all structures and fixtures therein it's not saying in the apartment of an apartment building, it's saying the building. So every single person, if there is a, a nuisance at one of the big apartment complexes that house a hundred people. Well, that's his comment. That is the lawyer's comment at E yeah, where is A, E1A that, that Freke pointed out to us where we had occupants at the property, capital O, capital P. Um, the lawyer's comment is the due process issue. He gives the example of a two family home we're thinking of examples where it might be a student residence where it has, you know, many people living there legally. Um, and, uh, you know, they're all legally liable and they all get notices. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. We have anyway, he's raised that issue okay. uh, in a nine. We might also just raise it here as well and ask about the due process implications. Yeah. Use the example of a fraternity. No. I would think simply notifying the owner of the property and and or the person in, and the person in charge would be sufficient. Um, what's the point? Of, what is the point of notifying all the residents? Because the penalty now falls on the person who owns the property. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? I mean, why should I if say I live in a house and we have a big party and we violate a whole bunch of laws? Um, why should this bother me? Um, because it's now the landlord that's that's on the hook. I mean, they'll come and lay the law down on us. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm trying to understand what the point of this is. Um, beyond just telling the, the owner of the property, you've got to clean up your act. If we do not think that this is actionable, we have the right to strike it completely. Well, I think we have a question about actionability and we'd like some right. clarification. Yeah, because you could deliver it to all occupants. We're, you know, that's yeah. it's act. You can commit you that could, act. Yeah. Yeah, right. But, but they, the word is it all the occupants within a, the apartment where a nuisance occurred? On like the, the, the duplex know. issue, the duplex issue, or the fraternity. Yeah. Right. Or, yeah. Because, yeah. They cover the folks who are engaging, even whether or not they live there. I mean, I mean, I have someone who we rent a, a room in our house. Mm -hmm. And so say you're a renter and you're occupying a room in a house mm -hmm. and they have a wild party. Yeah. And they get into all kinds of legal trouble. According to this, you're legally liable. Yeah. Even though mm -hmm. you're the renter. Mm -hmm. Even though you have no control over. Yeah, right. Because yeah. you're an occupant. Yeah, I don't think that that's okay. I don't think it's actually you need, that needs some clarification. Okay. I think there's yeah. a problem. Okay. I we have talked that to death. I have added a comment saying this is <laughs> actual. We uh, can do. We can talk some more. I mean, I enjoy it because we're, <laughs> we're know, all we're, we're hyping each other up in a way it's that a I don't. Well, it is best. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna move kind of past this part. I will admit, I read this several times and was a bit confused by the strike throughs. Um, so if someone can add some clarity for me, we're on E like one D or something. Because I'm gonna explain what the town attorney was trying to do here. Oops, sorry. I basically think they were trying to put into A and B anything that fell in D. Mm. The old D. Oh, old wait. D. They were saying that for a property receiving the first or second infraction, it's the occupants, the organizers, and the people engaging 
But then with the when the property gets a third or more infraction, that's the only time that the person in charge is brought in. Yeah. Am I reading that right? That doesn't seem right. I think um, CRC needs to sort this out. Yeah. Well, it, one says infra notice of infraction C. to all occupants who raise that issue, property owners and persons in charge. So they, they get notice of first and second. Where are you seeing? So that's G1. Am I in the right place? Oh, What's sorry, right? sorry. Liable, liable. Um, I'm sorry. So I'm getting lost. Okay, so let I'm me let me try to reorient. We're on okay. we're on E. No, you're good. So we're on E. Uh -huh. and he is saying that for the first or second infraction in a year, the owner is not liable, or the person in charge is not liable. But if a property gets more a three or more infractions within a year, that's when the person in charge and the owner becomes liable. And the only way they're not liable is if they are trying to evict a tenant, that tenant. Mm -hmm. So basically our question, I guess maybe this isn't our question, maybe this isn't actionability or, or clarity or consistency, but the different, the attorney set is taking out, recommends taking that out and having the person in charge be liable from the start. Yeah, they've they've gotten rid of the tiers of first year, second year, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That I think this is CRC's needs yeah, to, yeah. to read that. Okay, we're done with E, on to F. We already, that's fine. Two, abatement. You know, I said CRC, but I think we can just accept that. I think so, too. I actually agree. Okay. I think right. it's, I think yep. in three, the same thing is true. We can accept it. Yep. Yep. I'm just going to save this real quick because my computer keeps slowing down and I don't want to lose everything that we've just done. I think that's wise. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I hate to say this, but aren't we supposed to make our changes as track changes? What if our changes are accepting track changes? I think, I don't okay. know. I didn't think so. I thought what we were, I thought we just brought forward the, the version at, as right i think we can if we're accepting a track change then then it can you can it's like cleaning the document in essence okay for what it's worth though we have not added anything to this so right. if you would rather we can reopen the document from the start and just keep all of the suggested deletions from the town attorney We haven't deleted beyond that. Hmm. No, I think we're doing the right thing. Just do it, continue it like we are. Okay. They can always look at what the town attorney sent. Oh yeah, I have that, totally. Um, all right, so doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm gonna resolve that. Okay, um, this one. Which one are we on? Uh, on? Sorry, F3 response costs. Uh, I agreed, but the reason why I'm saying CRC, I, I think we could take care of it, except for that they said we need more information on the intent of this section. And yeah, I think this is CRC. Yeah. Um, That's the issue of offense versus, versus um, uh, whatever, yeah. Yeah, infraction. Oh, yeah. Hey, we caught it before they did. <laughs> um, good work council okay. resume coming through on that um okay five that was fine no problem all right g 
is this inconsistent with the up with the stuff up above where they eliminate the one year and so forth? Um, no, that was liability. This is no. Okay. Bit. All right. Fine. You're right. That's the difference. Yeah. But yeah, I had, I just did the same kind so of. So they wanted an introductory paragraph. That's clearly a CRC thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, did we already look at this or did they ask for that above too? They asked for that above too. I'm seriously deja vu moment. Uh, yeah, I think CRC needs to do that. Oh, this is. Oh my God, it changed all my comments that I made before to author. That's so annoying. Uh, deleting it. Mm-hmm. This was where my comment was before on owners versus persons in charge. I agree with all of the changes to, oh, this is an interesting change though. There's a difference there. We don't have a requirement on how timely the notices are delivered, do we? Or are notices done immediately? Because if we change this one year from the date of the notice might be different than one year from the date of the infraction if the notice right. is delivered immediately. I, I assume that the um that these are all delivered at the moment that you know the people are hauled in or whatever happens. Yeah. They're in other words, as close to the actual event happening as feasibly possible. Okay, so are we comfortable with it being from the infraction, not the notice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do, I read, do I read this correctly to state that you can meet the terms of, of this item simply by posting a single piece of paper on the property? Yeah. So you but, don't have to send notices to 15,000 people. But, you so have to post I, a notice on the property. This was my question too, because I don't think that that's an adequate way to reach property owners and persons in charge. Especially if they live in Timbuktu. Yeah. Exactly. So this this kind of got into a bigger question for me about, and I understand why this goes with rental reg, right? Because we need to know who the owners are and the managers are in order to deliver notices to them but I, I don't think that i don't think that compliance with this section is attained by posting the notice on the property for non-owner occupied homes i agree because what it yeah you yeah. know the original statement was may be and it he, still says may but may, i'm sorry i'm gonna need to move my computer okay i'm listening Take us on it says may include so it's just yeah it doesn't it doesn't actually it, it would seem that the way originally it was written you could also post one on a property but that would not so compliance with this section may include posting is what they wrote oh that's interesting i didn't right? see and then that. he inserted be attained and struck include so they had said it may include this, but he said compliance can be attained simply by doing this. Um, and, that's and interesting. And, it didn't show up as a track change. Well, that's what I'm looking at in the text. Yeah, no, I believe you. I just, it's everything else has shown up as a track change from the legal team. Well, CRC needs to weigh in here, but that would seem to be not what they would want and probably not what we would want, but they're the ones that need to weigh in, first of all. Um, is mm -hmm. that, that seems to change very much what they have in mind. Mm -hmm. there's also the issue of the dating of it I, I don't know what to say about that but mm -hmm. um, there's also the notice as it stands right now you just take one single piece of paper have these four items on it put it on the front door and it doesn't need to, to be this, on the front door could be just in the front door. put it on the base anyway just put it in the building somewhere and you're done that, that's you can put the, it in the back shed yeah, right. That's nice. uh, and by the way, it has to have five lines because it has to say other for all the other ones that they don't list. Yeah. Where? You know, joke. Just oh, <laughs> <you're right. laughs> ha 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 ha. Um, 
Okay. Okay. So big issues. I have big issues with this one. I actually, I don't think that this is clear or actionable. Oh, I mean, I guess supposedly it's actionable, but I think that there's too much interpretation of it. And I do not think that it is lined up with who they want to contact. Um, I actually prefer this being the first notice, not infraction, because I don't think that if something goes wrong, I don't think it's fair that someone be held. I think that the notice date should happen on the date of the infraction, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I struggle with that one. I don't, I don't agree with the change to infraction. Anyone else have thoughts? You know, Ana, you might be right. For example, if they have to bring in the sheriff's office or something, it could take more than a day and yeah. So I, I want to reject this one. May yeah. I ask quickly a process question? Yeah. We send this to CRC with our comments and things that they have to look at. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that it comes back to us. It does. All right. That's my understanding as well. And then we look to see if they've actually responded to what we were concerned about. And yep. we have to do this again. Sure do. Okay. I I don't need to have a life. So <laughs> That's why I thought this all should have gone to CRC to begin with. Yeah, well, we made all it. Right. Right. So yeah. we're almost we're almost done, y'all. We're getting close. I see the I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Page three out of five. All right. Are we okay accepting these uh changes? Third yeah. instead of response, it should be infraction. So, because response could mean anything. Um, this is what this is. They, this they is just changed it. It's, it's it's a grammatical thing. No, because this would be the change. Um, the it used to be that the owners mm -hmm. and persons in charge were not liable until the third one. The lawyer wants to change it so that they're liable from the start. I agree with that. From this, I'm going to leave it for now because it depends on what CRC decides to do. Um, okay, we've done this, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, third infraction, infraction or greater. This is the same issue. I think it should say notice. Because if we're measuring from the notice up here, we have to measure from the notice down here. Yep. I don't understand the difference between delivered and made because I don't have any. I'm going to say something I think CRC needs to address in this, which is that I think that they need to navigate property being apartment, being dwelling, as well as property. Because for this, again, you might be noticing so many people if you notice everyone on the property, uh, everyone on the property. Councilor Ate? Yes. That's related to um, something I wanted to mention, which is that the property will be designated a nuisance property capitalized, which implies it is defined, but there is no definition. And the property itself isn't liable for the infraction. Human beings are liable for the infraction, not the property. So. Um, I think at least there should be some kind of definition or some clarity on what nuisance property means. Yep. I think they, I mean, I guess like they're trying to def define it here by saying it's well, a well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. or more violations but it is undefined in definition section, technically. And you could argue that in a sense, the entire bylaw 
is an attempt to state what a nuisance property is. Which is that a property that's received three or more violations. Right, right, right. And you, it, that might very well be appropriately placed in here under definition. We also have the phrase corrective action plan capitalized repeatedly. And yeah. There's no definition of that. Is that is there a reason? Is that like a term of art that's capitalized everywhere? Or is that it's it's used all throughout this section and there's absolutely no definition of it. Uh, is I mean, there must be somewhere in there where it says what it is, but unless it's somewhere in our rental bylaw. So maybe that's it. it should be defined, yeah. So uh, I, would, you know, I, I think, think it I think it may be in there because you know, like when somebody has a um a physical problem, like with plumbing or something, there's a corrective action plan. I think it's in the rental bylaw. So we should have sense. to every bylaw should have to define the term in it because I wouldn't know where to go to find that definition. I agree. Uh, like it should be defined in this bylaw as well, or at least the definition that yeah. like find yeah. in yeah. bylaw three point blah 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 blah. So it first appears, I think, here at uh, B. Yeah. Um, B was it G two B? I think that's the first time it appears. Then it appears multiple times throughout this section. And I guess a question for CRC is, does this need to be defined? Where is one supposed to find out what it means? That's a nicer way of phrasing what I said. Uh, could you? <laughs> does it need to be defined? And uh, if not, where does one go to find out what it means? Or is it a term of art that everybody who does this sort of thing simply knows? I mean, we don't know it. The average person would know it. So yep. we just nope. here. Yeah. I think that's very fair. Okay. Um did we say what the time frame was for the meeting that they have to have with town hall? I can't remember. It says within the required time frame a meeting with town hall is scheduled but i i don't recall again i think that's all part of the rental registration plan stuff it comes down below yeah it does well it says wow. nuisance property correction process oh five days okay so it, it's it's mentioned earlier and then defined later okay i will let it go then yeah. uh any other issues with to be okay. The I felt like this needed to be discussed. CRC needs to discuss this with the town manager. That inspection services is going to be the yeah, as to who it's going to be. Yep, I think that's uh -huh. fair. What was suggested to me um, was inspection service services or its designee. Oh, that would work. That was yeah, but what if what if yeah. the town doesn't even want it to be inspection services? This is the kind of thing that it's I it's this goes beyond what I think our charges. The the attorney made the decision to suggest inspection services. We don't know if that's the right I think that's a fair point. Hmm. It wasn't CRC's ad, it was the attorney's no. ad. Right. Um, I'm going to leave that then in the other spaces as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. correction all process. The way down to the... Yeah, it's used throughout. Um... I think, sorry, I just wanted to note, I think that somewhere when they're reaching the owner or property manager, it needs to say via certified mail. I don't think that, I think- I do it, too. I agree. I think that it needs to have that for when they're contacting property owner. To make this actionable, I don't think that it's fair to say post on the property. Well, maybe that's not actionability, though. Maybe that's just me being persnickety. Let's mention it and see what I think that seems appropriate. Maybe, maybe it's both. Town, yeah, maybe the town does this as a matter of course, but I think it should be mentioned. Okay, so if we did that, it would be... Which is expensive. I know. Uh... So what it could be is shall, this is a bigger change than I don't, I don't, I want to ask if it's okay to make. 
Notice of infraction of a public nuisance shall be delivered to all occupants, which may be attained by posting notice on the property, comma, property owners and persons in charge via certified mail. I can live with that. Again, we're back to sending certified mail to an army of people. No, that's just property owners and, and persons in charge. That's what I was saying. If we right. say not, deliver not to all occupants. Okay. All occupants. Okay, go ahead. Staying. Sorry, my computer is going very, very slow. I'm not typing this slow. I typed it like 30 seconds ago. Is that why you turned your video off? Yeah, I was hoping that would help it not be so weird. Mm. <laughs> it's not that I didn't want you to see my face. I think it's because the dog's sitting on her lap. No, and <laughs> mine is off because I'm shoving french fries into my mouth. <laughs> and remember, we're being recorded. Ah, uh, yes. Dinner. Does this <laughs> sentence that I just edited, I'm going to leave these edits in for CRC to see. Yes. Um, and I think we should add it here in section two as well. No, that's, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, then we would delete hypothetically this section. Oops, sorry, this part. From both sections. Are people comfortable with that change? So I took, I would delete yeah. this because it's no longer true. And maybe later if you don't need it, but I don't Hi, Carol. Okay. Um, but you're going to leave it in so that CRC. I'm leaving it in so they can see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The notice shall include the following. Okay. We already talked about that, I guess. Uh, each day or portion thereof. Inspection services, now we're back to CRC again. Yep. I think this is a fair deletion. I don't think they can guarantee a meeting within two weeks. That's up to the town. I mean, I, I get, I can see, I guess I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say it's, I'm not gonna fight it. Okay. Um. Kind of just continuing through all of this. It's all just the changes to, I think this is a fair addition. Corrective action instead of just plan. Mm -hmm. Councilor Ate? Except the word separate. Yeah, Councilor Ate? C says failure to implement the corrective action plan within the time frame is a separate violation of this bylaw. Violation of this bylaw is an infraction, so it's a separate infraction. Yes, and I agree with you, but I also feel like that's confusing and I don't know why I find it confusing. So you're saying it should be It should just be changed to infraction because even above, if I find the proper place, infraction is used already. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know why I'm stuck on it, but I, th I know you're right. Okay. Um, 
That's a 3A2. Within 10 days of the date of the notice, the owner of the or designee shall submit a corrective action plan to the town, which shall in indicate the ways the owner intends to take control of the property so that it does not accumulate more infractions. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Um, this is the attorney missed this one. Should I add a comment saying inspection services question mark? Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying I got two that the attorney missed. Okay. Um, again, with infraction. The, the number of infractions is mounting here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Infraction. Infraction. Infractions. Uh, <laughs> Decided to create to something new. Out. Being creative. Uh, all right. You get to number 10, it's an infraction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, I am awake. Yeah. yeah. This is how we see if people are actually reading their meeting materials. You put something silly in the middle. Okay. Um, e. That's the same thing we had before. Is this the department? Well, here it's the department acting yeah. agent of the town, whereas mm -hmm. in the other cases. That's what they should do. We've done that in other bylaws. We define the town as inspection right. services or their does it like they could mm -hmm. their designee yeah councilor Ate? there's a lack of clarity on e mm -hmm. so that owner may re request the town remove the nuisance property designation if the property has not received an infraction yep i think something is missing there because you don't receive an infraction you commit an infraction and you receive perhaps a notice mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Received notice of an infraction? Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good on this with those changes. All right, H, last one. I, I I guess I'm the one that said accept, but leave this for CRC. Yeah, that's fine. I was fine to accept it. I, I'm just rereading again. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that severability clause we have in pretty much every bylaw. I think we should have suggested putting it in if the attorney didn't. I think we should just accept this, to be honest with you. Yeah. This, this is the the language. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, it, it's in so many others. And it's important. Just, yeah, there's one, just a general one in the bylaws itself that applies to the entire bylaw. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that's so, just, yeah, there it is. We are not going to vote this clear, consistent, and actionable tonight. Okay. No, but we are going to vote to send it. To excuse me. <laughs> Enough of that. Do not tell me what we're going to do when I'm about to tell you what we're going to do. Called a mutiny. Seriously. <laughs> I'm going to declare you a nuisance property. All right. So um, we are going to vote to send this to CRC with the changes that we've made for their review. Um, and they will then they will be sending it back to us once they've completed that review. Well, so changes that we've made, but also uh, for them to review sections that we felt we couldn't address. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I move to, I don't know if it's an official referral. I don't know if GOL can refer things formally. Can we? Sure. Sure. Okay. Athena's going to kill me when she reads the, sees this recording. Uh, I move to refer bylaw 3.26 nuisance property as um, as modified by GOL on May 23rd, 2024 to CRC for review of changes and questions from the town attorney. Second, that's it. Thank you.
Um, all those in favor, Pat. Aye. Hold on. Do you want to say and return it to CR to GOM? Because it they can't they can't. It's still with us, right? Okay. All right. To be returned, modifying my motion to yeah. add the following, to be returned to GOL for further review for clarity, consistency, and actionability. Councilor Ette, you seconded my motion. Do you accept that change? I accept it. Thank you. Now I will call the vote. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Councilor Ryan? Aye. Lynn Griesmer? Aye. Councilor Ette? Aye. And I am an aye as well. Okay, thank you. I will send this to Pam tonight. All right, folks, it is 8 p.m. Here's what we are going to talk about for the remainder of our time together. We, uh, Lynn, it was requested at the council that Lynn continue follow-up on the um, retreat priorities and the goals. So we have a half an hour left. We are going to be taking 15 minutes to give to Lynn. Uh, and then we are going to take 15 minutes to go through the um, resolution that we have. At our next meeting, I am anticipating, our next meeting is June 6th. Pat, to answer your earlier question, I am anticipating that hopefully the uh, we are trying to meet with the folks who, um, with the former chair of AHRA to talk about the charge before it comes, to talk about the attorney recommendations. Um, and so we wanna do that before GOL digs into it. Um, and so it, depending on when that meeting gets scheduled, it will either be on the agenda for the 6th or the 20th, but it, it's on the, the drafts for those. Um, and if we can meet with her earlier, it will be on the 6th. Uh, we have scheduled that meeting. Oh, did she confirm? Um, yeah, yes. I have to look, go ahead, please, That's I'm okay. sorry. So I wanted to answer Pat's question as to when that would be coming up. Um, and that is that is the answer, it's either the 6th or the 20th. Um, and I'm um, opening the window for me. Pat, any questions on that? No, uh, no, that's fine. Okay, thank you. And it's dependent on the meeting with the original committee members. Yeah, yeah uh, not the original committee members, sorry. Just the former chair of that oh, committee. Yes, okay. Yeah, uh, Yeah. I, I need to write this to constituent. Yeah. Former chair. We are meeting on the 5th at 2 o'clock. Okay. I'm going to... You're taking her out early. Who's we? I'm sorry. sorry. I'm talking about my dog. Um, that was hilarious. Uh, we is myself and the council president. Ah, that uh, means, okay, fine. Council president as council president, me as chair of GOL. Thank you. Uh, has Paul sent out the um, KP Law's response? Because I would like to see it. Uh, irrespective of when you're meeting with the AHRA person. I thought he sent it out. I thought he did too. I, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you again, Pat. I, I'd appreciate that. I have, I can't see, I'm having trouble finding, I'm not keeping yeah, up. Yeah, he sent it to the town council on May 10th. I'm forwarding it to you. Oh right my now God. As, as a um, note. Thank you. I yeah. apologize. Yeah. Does anyone else need me to send it so that they have it at the top of their inbox? No. It'll be in the packet. Okay. Um, and I believe that it can be, sh my understanding, Lynn, can you correct me if I'm wrong, that it may be shared even though it's labeled attorney-client privileged? Yes. yes. Oh, it may. Okay, great. So you're you're clear to talk about yeah. it? Yeah. Um, okay. So... Any further questions on upcoming agenda items? We've got a bunch of meetings coming up for interviews. Um, yeah. Lynn, can you give us an update? Yeah, I will. And then we'll go right into goals. I just wanted to give an update as, as we get nearer to that marathon week and what it's sort of shaping up like because we will need to post the 
meetings. Well, we need to go ahead and post the meetings, but I will tell you that at this point, I'm only seeing us approaching seven complete applications. You mean seven? At this point in time, yeah. Okay. And the deadline's tomorrow. Deadline is tomorrow. And I've yeah. sent everything to everybody and I've reminded that. No, wait a minute. Is the deadline tomorrow? No. No, if the deadline is next Wednesday. Hold on. Let me check this. I've got it. Oops. Wednesday the 11th? No, no, I'm sorry. Um, I'm checking it right now. Um, SOS and sign up for interview deadline tomorrow is the 24th. Yep. Which um, is tomorrow. Yes. And right now we're looking at only seven completed applications. What do we... There's nothing we can do about it. No. Oh, we we, we can't. voted the poll sufficient with 19. And, um, and only three have officially withdrawn. Councilor Ate? Um, could you expand on uh, not being able to do anything? Seven is less than nine. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. It also gives us no choice. I mean, which basically they, they get appointed just by virtue of having filled out. The so yeah. what I mean by we have, we, we can't do anything is that our only decision point to extend the process is determining the pool sufficient and the pool is determined sufficient before SOIs are in. It's just the CAFs that we receive. So there isn't a stop. There's no measure for us to say, we don't have enough actual applicants. We need to go back out at this point in the process. There's no mechanism for that, that I'm aware of. Does anyone else? Yeah. It's no well, don't, don't, yeah. Oh, We're going to start to talk over each other a little bit. So let's go to hands and I'll I'll follow that rule too and raise my own hand. Does anyone know of any other mechanism by which, or Councilor Ate? I don't know, but we could test. You know, is there a way to rescind what has already been done and start the clock again? Because if it remains at seven, then there isn't even a point to having interviews, you might as well just accept the statements and have that as the public document of whatever is necessary to hold them to the posts that they are going into. Councilor Ryan? You could, I think, with a vote of your colleagues here, extend the SOI deadline um, another week. I think that I don't see why we couldn't do that and inform the council at the next meeting that that happened. You could go to the council and say, we deem the pool sufficient, but after uh, putting out our request for SOIs, we do not have a sufficient number even to fill the committee. Um, and so that's a problem and we need council advice. We need the council to tell us what they want us to do. Or we could just go ahead and and basically, as 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 Council Ete has just said, essentially we can do away with the interviews. We can do away with everything and just appoint seven people, and go back to the council and say we need two more. When? Just because a person interviews or has submitted an SOI should not mean that they are automatically accepted onto the committee. No. That there have been instances and uh, where a they can see remained open, even though there was a candidate and the candidate was rejected. You can have a failed search, yeah. Yeah. And okay. we have criteria for selection. And if we look at the candidates that have so far made an effort, um, they may create a problem just on those grounds. I don't know, anyway. Councilor Ate? Yeah, um, I'm thinking also about the legitimacy of the process going forward as whatever ends up being the end product if we have things the way they are um, that might become an issue. Mm -hmm. Len? I think we should extend uh, till um, but we have to post them 48 hours in advance, is that right? 
we needed to, we need, the reason why we set that date the way we did was that Athena needs um, to post the meeting on Tuesday, the 28th. Right. Uh, that's a week beforehand. And so, um, and Monday's a holiday. She needs to post it. She needs to post the SOIs a week in advance. In the meeting for the interview. In the meeting for the interview, right. yeah. Is, Really? So prior to our, um, the SOIs need to be posted. They get posted with the meeting. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, so if we extended to uh, noon on Tuesday, I mean, because my next move is going to be to call people and just say, are you in or out? Right. Um, all applicants SOI shall be posted to the town website at the same time, at least one week in advance of the meeting at which the interviews take place. The SOIs shall also be attached to the public meeting posting to provide additional access to the public. So hypothetically, we don't need to post the meeting. We just need to post the SOIs, but they typically are just, they go together. No, I think we should post the meeting and the SOIs on the 28th. Um, and we should give an extension till noon on the 28th. I want to confirm with Athena that that's yeah. possible before voting to do that. Well, we have to vote and then she can just tell you, no, you can't because we won't be meeting again. But no, oh, that's right. We, did, we didn't give a time, did we? Oh, oh, wait, you're saying, sorry, you're saying extend the SOI deadline to Tuesday. The Tuesday, the 28th at noon, mm -hmm. gives us till the end of the day to post the meeting. So, Plus Memorial Day weekend, which may be a complicating factor for many people Absolutely. who simply may not be here or simply will not have the time or be traveling oh. with God knows what. So. But they already don't, I mean, yeah. I guess that doesn't really matter because the deadline's before Memorial Day weekend right now. We're now extending it through Memorial Day weekend. Right? If we did, yeah. But I don't think, one, it may trigger people. Lynn, you said you'd be willing to call people. It might yeah. trigger to get them in uh, in advance or before weekend. they yeah. leave. Exactly. And that also gives them uh, some time over the weekend. Not everyone is going away and doing all kinds of things we have to the reason part of the reason of this i'm just i have the policy up if we extend it to tuesday, noon on tuesday or whatever yeah. all the sois have to be posted at the same time so so we can't see what's already been returned yeah per the policy that per the yeah, yeah. so I, I want to correct myself. There's only five completed applications. He's not French. Holy crap. And I will just tell you on the day, right, the day after our last meeting, I spent probably four hours getting this thing out. No, oh, I'm so sorry, Lynn. No, it, no, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that it's, you know, we did it on time and um, I've sent one reminder uh, and I'll send another reminder and make phone calls tomorrow. Did we say a time on Friday that they were due? No, let me see what I sent. Because I'd be more comfortable saying 5 p.m. on Monday than noon on Tuesday. Mm. Uh, can you do, you know, I guess, so there's 7 PM Monday, but I'd, I'd be more comfortable giving Athena the full Tuesday. That makes sense, Anna. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. Because we're already taking one day away from her, hypothetically. But she's not working Monday. I no, said, I know, but that's what I'm 5 saying. PM on May, I said 5 p.m. May 24. So you want to say we'll extend it till 5 p.m. on May 27th. Seven. That's fine. 
God, I hope Athena's okay with this. I do. I really don't like doing this without her being able to say okay. Just because of the workload issue. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, we're changing her demands without her. That is without her input. I agree. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable with that. Um, but I don't know what else to do. Well, I'm going to try, I'm going to make the phone calls tomorrow. So I'm, I don't want to advertise the deadline, but I feel like we just need to have a more, a better applicant pool. Okay. Um, I move to uh, change the deadline for statement of interest being re uh, returned for the Charter Review Committee 2024 to 5 p.m. on Monday, May 27th. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. And I'm going to call the vote. I am an aye. Councillor Ette? Aye. Pat D'Angelis? Aye. Councillor Ryan? Aye. Lane Griesmer? Aye. All right. I will, if Athena wants to teach me how to do it, I will do it. That would take longer. Okay. Um, Lynn, we, we've got a little bit of time for you. I, I only need a little bit. I, I'm going to show you an example. Okay. Was it that we just made that vote because the Charter Review Committee wasn't on the agenda. Sorry, I'm just now panicking. Um, it was a, a vote we had to make, had to take. It's unexpected. Yeah. I didn't topic's know. not reasonably anticipated. It was a topic un unanticipated. Thank you. Okay. On the screen, oh, you'll okay. see the following. This, this is just an example of what I want you to look at. I'm, then I'm only going to show you this one. This is the very first goal. Okay. On the left in the yellow is how people rated it and the message I gave people back. So in this case, you saw this one up here, use a climate lens when making budget decisions, et cetera. And then I made notes from our retreat, ongoing, see the budget, okay? Then I got down to this one, which is, uh, what, waste hauler? Yes, I got down to this one, okay? And, I clearly can see some people are much more interested in waste hauler. Other people are much more interested in solar, et cetera. And so I'm suggesting not break up the goal, but break up how people rate it within the goal. And that, and so the message back to people would be on this particular one, rate them based on the sub goals. And if you have another one you want that we haven't mentioned here, fine because it said other okay um uh, and then but i'm going to suggest that we not bother to rate the ongoing ones it's only the ones where i see us you know having to spend a lot of staff time um uh, and I'm, i guess what i'm just asking is that you um trust me with your judgment to go ahead like this i was looking for feedback we don't have a lot of time but what I'm trying to do is get a little more granular in a couple places where we've like this one, where it has three different options under it, right. not waste hauler, solar, whatever. Later on, for instance, under capital, there's going to be a lot of confusion because people aren't going to know what to say about the library anymore. And, you know, it, th th this is not a static document. This is mm -hmm. a evolving document so any thoughts on that i think this is looking at this is why it reaffirms why i feel so strongly that this committee needs to change and improve the process recommend changes to the process of the evaluation because when what we end up with are goals that are all over the place in scope lynn i think that your response is maybe the best thing that we will get with these goals as they're framed. But I think that we, I, I understand that there are other things that are also prioritized, but for me, that's why the evaluation is really important to, to dissect and, and fix because we're creating something that's not able to really be prioritized in my mind because there, there's such different scopes within the they're, list. They're not parallel statements. Exactly. Right? So you can't prioritize them. Right. And it, and it should be something that we can prioritize for Paul in terms of 
making our expectations clear. Council. Mm -hmm. George. So again, we have the process of setting goals and we have the process of evaluating the town manager. These are two separate things, correct? Now I realize we evaluate the town manager largely, though not exclusively, on his ability to meet the goals the council has set. But there are other things that we evaluate the town manager on besides that. So here we're looking strictly at how we establish the goals. This is about reviewing the process for creating the town manager goals document. It, it is, but it's it, it goes just a step further. And that is within the town manager goals, how do we prioritize? And if you'll remember, when I first had people do this, they rated within the goals and then they rated external to the goals. And I'm still working through that piece. But I would like to bring this to the council on the third. With the purpose of trying to clarify the goals for this year. Yeah. I, I, to, to have the council say, okay, fine, send this out and then I'll have people fill it in and then on the 17th, I'll bring back the results. Anna? I, I call on me. Thank you. For <laughs> if I don't call on you then. <laughs> I was distracted. Sorry. I was looking because, George, I don't think that what you said is really correct. The mm -hmm. evaluation is the goal, is on only the goals. That is what we evaluate on. And, and the document reads the town, I'm, I'm pulled it up from 2023. You know, the um, town manager was asked to make progress on 13 ambitious and interrelated policy goals and management goals. Um, the town council was only prioritizing the policy goals. We didn't look mm -hmm. at the management goals for, for this document, but mm -hmm. our evaluation and our goals are the same. Shaped by that. That Yeah, th yeah there's nothing different in our evaluation. So under that. management, if I go back and read it, there would be, you know, and his communication with the public, his interaction with his department heads, um, his ability to uh, blah, blah, blah. That's all under management and that's already there. Okay. And okay. We didn't, we're not prioritizing management goals. I understand. Only... No, I understand. But it's there and the point but is. But it's there and it's framed as goals. The basis of our evaluation yeah. process. Right. Yeah. All right. So I think that's, that's, what's driving my and, and all I'm trying to accomplish with this is to prioritize within the goals within the policy goals policy goals right yeah. okay. All right. Well. okay done okay thank you um all right folks we're going to move to oh my gosh the number of tabs when I tell you the number of tabs we are going to move to the paint stewardship resolution yep. and we're going to do it in eight minutes Everybody ready? Yep. Um, I am currently opening the file that I had opened, but it didn't download. Sorry. Everyone get your notes ready. Shake it out. <laughs> get your best, best and brightest. George, all ready? Okay, hang on. I was Very small point, but I would think just from the point of view of, of the look and the logic, the footnote should not be under the word and. So footnote one should come after expected and footnote, whatever foot, whatever footnote two is after similar rates and so on with any other footnotes. Right now, the footnote comes after and. That's, oh, I thought I changed that. Well, maybe you did. Maybe I'm looking at an older document. And if you did, thank you. And yeah. or maybe it's not that important. I thought I changed it because that I noticed that too. But if I now well, is it people looking at the document. I'm looking at the document that was in the, the packet. No, no, no. Yeah, no. no. I'm, I'm, whoops. And it says N1. And then footnote. So that should be moved. This is a small thing. It should this be moved. The, she didn't put um, one in the yeah. full. Again, it also makes claims that, I mean, at this point, maybe it's just not worth debating. But um, it doesn't have the right one in the packet, does it? The wrong one in the packet. All right. So there's another one. Okay. That's it. I went to the packet. That's what I mean. Which you should have. Well, it could be in SharePoint. Right. I just didn't, didn't get Why to don't you? No, it's it. not. It's not the right. Hang on. Give me a second. Okay. All right. So if you could put the right one on the screen, I will stop looking at this one. <laughs> and look at the one on the screen. And I take it you already caught that. So it's great. I did. And I'm 
That's right. It's a minor, uh, thing, minor thing. This is the one I sent in. Um, so apologies for, hang on, I'm going to pull the right one up. Yeah, because I, I would, I, I persnickety'd it as <laughs> sponsor. Hopefully, this looks better. Thank you. Yep. All right. I'm so, going to ask you if you could make it a little larger. I surely will. That's all, that's fine. No, I can, I'll make it bigger. I, it was okay. Is that good? Yep. Okay. Um, so I apologize, folks, that the incorrect version was in the packet. This is the this is the correct version. Um, George, Great. I did move those footnotes. That's fine. Good, thank you. Uh, all right, line by line, first whereas. Any notes? No. Okay. Oops, sorry. Second whereas. Any notes? Councilor Arte? Just a question. Um, 30%, do we usually go with the symbol or go with percent? Uh, I think if it's over 10, we do. And if it's under 10, we write the words. Okay. That's my understanding from my, I think, way back in APA citations. But I, okay, thank you. It was very validating that someone said I was I was right in my remembrance of that. Uh, <laughs> third, <laughs> whereas, <laughs> it's been a while since I wrote my master's thesis. Fourth, whereas. Fifth, whereas the change from the one you're seeing is that I took out, there was a, a either a second whereas or it was at the end of this one. Oh, I'm gonna stop my video again. Uh, that said it was very popular or something like that. Right, exactly, yeah. Because it wasn't provable. Um, so the, just, well, here it says it's been demonstrated, but again, we take it on trust. We I'm can. sure it's true, I'm sure it's true, but I just, yeah, you know, it's... Um, if you are uncomfortable with it, we can say paint stewardship laws have been enacted in our neighboring states. If you're, if you feel like that would be, and have done, yeah, have yeah, it makes it makes a claim of fact that you know we just either accept or we ask that there be some you know reference to a document that says these have been effective. Whereas if you simply state that they've been enacted, mm -hmm. that's a statement of fact. That's that I don't need to have that verified. I assume that it's truthful and. Uh, so that's the my only concern, and it, it's I don't know is that clarity, consistency, or actability? I don't think so. It probably is more a matter of discussion at the council level, which I don't really want to get into. But that that's my only thought. So, yeah, I'd probably leave it and just if I want to make a point about it, I can raise it at council. Okay. Anyone else feels strong? Unless someone else feels that it's yeah, you know, it's not clarity. I would just do it here. I would. I also. I think. As one of the sponsors and Pat's another sponsor, so I'll ask her thoughts. If we we I am okay saying paint stewardship laws have been enacted in our neighboring states of Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, Vermont, and New York. Excellent. That's what I would suggest. I, I'm Pat. That's a substantive change. So that's up to you guys. I I'll go along with it, but I feel like it the information has shown that they've been effective in the states where they've been enacted so i don't know i think well then why not reference the source that tells me that i mean i don't know that. i have no idea right well we don't have a footnote on this one i know and i'm not trying to make work for you but it, it makes a claim that you, you know, can change it if you want no all right we're gonna leave it because i think we're gonna leave it and and if I want to raise it, I can raise it at council. council. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Well, Pat yeah. and I will come prepared with legions yes. from these states. Just smack me down. Right? <laughs> it's all right. You're giving us time. You're just giving us time to do our homework. Okay. That's all right. Uh, next one. Whereas municipal waste management systems. Right. Fine. Uh, Mass Municipal Association. That's great. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> whereas legislation. I'm going to spell out. I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to say Massachusetts. Oop, I didn't turn on track changes. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. Just do it. Yep. Good. Uh, now, therefore. Uh, punctuation. Of, are we doing semicolons? I'm sorry. I'm afraid for this. We do semicolons, not commas. Is that correct? All the way through the document. Yeah, it's right. semicolons. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, but it's until semicolon. the last one. 
Yes. The less whereas. Now you got it. Okay, we just missed one or two. Everybody yeah. else has said those. Two. I good for you. Okay. Uh, this should say that we right. The Amherst Council. We yes, that's right. Okay. Comma. Yeah. The Council. Council. Damn. Oh yeah. Thank you. Then would it be urge, or is it urges? We, the council, urge. It's a collective. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Favorably. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. See it further resolved. Another one. Same changes before, added the two commas, added we and, and changed urge to urge. Uh, just one tiny thing. You've got your uh, quotation marks in that uh, third line at the very end. That should be above, right? And act, it's, you have it below for some reason. It should be raised to the top, right? Yeah. Um, Tiny, just yeah. Well, it was just missing. There were two commas. Oh, missing. I see. Okay, fine. And I could put something. Okay. And... Okay. Okay. Maybe we should urge the committee to come up with a unified bill. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm just, it, it's late. Yeah. <laughs> it we're is. almost done. And that Aaron's Council name Arate is Bill. has his hand up. Oh, sorry, Councilor Arate. I'm sorry. Yeah, the top margin doesn't appear to be the same yeah. as the order. And it's like that. There you go. Um, I we don't put another thing in there. We don't. No. You just yeah, just we just off. do that. Yeah. Okay. And somehow or another in doing that, you broke up your paragraph. You yeah. want to pull it back. No, okay. there's there's an extra space under the set last whereas. Go up. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that that does aligns it. Beautiful. Okay. I don't think I I don't think I fixed Councilor Ajay's concern, but that fixes yes, it. It just looks more like it does. You're right. Yeah, it was zero point five or zero point seven five. Yeah, yeah. you guys are amazing. <laughs> yeah, good um, eyes. Younger eyes. Okay. I'm prepared to make a motion. Thank you, George. Please do. If you can scroll up for me, um, I move to declare the resolution in support of paint stewardship legislation to be clear, consistent, and actionable. Can you modify your motion to say as modified by GOL? As modified by GOL. Thank you. Uh, I'll second that. Second. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, all right, calling the vote. Lynn. Aye. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Aye. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Councillor Ate. Aye. And I am an I as well. All right, y'all, thank you so much. We knocked a lot mm -hmm. off of this today. And um, I will send this to... Athena to bring to the council. Um, we are going to be meeting again on June 6th. Stay tuned. Um, mm, we're meeting again on June. Oh yeah, sorry. We're meeting before that because we have 17 interviews. We're meeting again on June 4th. Thank you. I apologize. That's um, okay. And Athena will post those. That's why it's showing me they're not posted. Okay. Um, I will see you all next week for interviews. I move to adjourn. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Ryan. Awesome. All right. Lynn. Aye. I am an aye. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Amazing. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Superb. Councillor Ate. Aye. Well done. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Take care, all. Bye. Bye.